Global warming is always a hotly contested, pun intended, uh, issue that generates widespread debate. In the scientific community, though, there is a strong consensus that global surface temperatures have indeed increased in recent decades and that the trend is caused by us, our emissions of greenhouse gases. But only about half of Americans believe the scientific consensus, that only about half of Americans believe that global warming is caused by human activity. Many think it is from natural patterns or doesn't exist at all. A fascinating article in New York Magazine titled The Uninhabitable Earth describes the apocalyptic impacts of climate change and how climate change will render the Earth, well, uninhabitable by the end of the century. With me now is the author of that article, David Wallace Wells, deputy editor for New York Magazine and author of the cover article. Take me back to the beginning. You get an assignment or you're pitching this? I pitched it. I you know, sort of an amateur follower of the climate news, but following it pretty closely, read the UN's IPCC reports, which are sort of the state of the art of what we know about climate change. And it struck me that a lot of what was baked into that research was much scarier than was being talked about in the mainstream media and among anyone except like the very well-informed scientists. So I set about figuring out what those worst case scenarios would look like if they came to pass. Um, I took the UN's own guideline about what was likely to happen in terms of temperature given no emissions reduction, which is a big if that's almost certainly not going to happen. We surely will take action of some kind. But I wanted to see what would happen if we didn't. And I made a tour, spoke to a couple- We, we being humanity on the planet at large. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I spoke to a couple dozen scientists, read maybe a couple hundred scientific papers, focused on the question of if we get to six degrees of Celsius of warming or eight degrees of Celsius warming, what will the planet look like? It's often said that we reach a tipping point of survivability at two degrees of Celsius warming. Uh, and now you're talking about six if we do nothing. Even if we did what the countries at the Paris Accords have laid out, we would still blow past two degrees of warming. We're on a course for an uninhabitable Earth. Something like that. I mean, I, personally, I have a little more hope that we will take action. At some point, I think that so much of the devastation when it becomes clear what we're doing to the planet will make us act and make us take aggressive action. The worry is that we won't do that soon enough and so that more of the effects will be sort of baked into the climate than we'd really like. And you're absolutely right. The Paris Accords call for a goal of two degrees of warming, but previous estimates in previous decades suggested that that was the threshold of catastrophe. It would result in dozens if not hundreds of drowned cities possibly hundreds of millions of climate refugees. And now we're talking about that as a kind of best case scenario. So when I first looked at this picture in the magazine, this is, this is a picture from the layout of the magazine mm -hmm. and the caption says something about how in the jungles of Costa Rica, uh, the, uh, the air and the humidity are combined are so deadly that a person couldn't survive moving around for a few hours. But at first I thought this was a real person. <laughs> we're not quite there yet. No, but we're heading there. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think um, one important thing to keep in mind is that while a lot of the scenarios I talk about in the piece, and maybe we can talk about them in detail in a minute, um, they are really extreme worst case scenarios. But a lot of things get a lot worse very quickly, well before we get to a worst case scenario. So in the case of heat, you know, it's going to take 10 degrees of warming, which will not happen this century, even in a worst case scenario, for parts of the equator and the tropics to be literally uninhabitable, that is too hot for humans to live. But already in El Salvador, workers in the sugarcane fields are having huge rates of kidney disease as a result of dehydration. They're so dehydrated they can't drink enough water. Exactly. Now, I remember when I was covering climate change myself, people always saying it doesn't get enough attention. And now here you are putting it on the cover of a magazine and you're getting criticism for not doing it in the right way, maybe going too far. Your reaction to your critics? Well, the first thing I would say is that um, the response has been amazing in terms of volume, that there have been an enormous number of readers, and it's shocked everyone at the magazine at how big a deal this story has been. We were surprised that readers would care so much. Um, there have been some critics, scientists, and science writers who are a little bit worried about the, um, what one scientist, Michael Mann, a very notable scientist, called the doomist phrase, framing of the piece, that is, the proposition that were we to do nothing, the Earth would become uninhabitable. On that issue, I'd say a couple of things. The first is, these scientists are heroes. I admire them enormously, and I would not want to criticize their interpretation of the data at all. What I've tried to do is take their research, 
buried in scientific papers and not much seen by the public, and take seriously the threats that they're raising themselves. Um, I do think that the story is alarmist. I wouldn't say doomist, but that's it's alarmist because I think there's real cause for alarm. And because under the current trajectory, we would be headed for what the scientists suggest is doom. Something like doom, I mean. <laughs> Something um, like doom, yeah. shy of doom. Uh, well, you know, if, if we end up the, if we end up with half as much food coming out of our um, grain farmland to feed a planet that has twice as many people, that's really damaging. There's ec economists who say that for every half degree of warming, we'll get um, 10 or 20 percent increase in armed conflict. So at four or five degrees warming, you're talking about almost twice as many wars as we have today. Yeah. And that's not even getting to the catastrophic scenarios. That's something like, you know, worse than median outcome, but not anything at the far end of the spectrum. And those are terrifying. So you had a goal when you wrote this article. You set out to do something. Do you think you've done it? I'd like to think that I have. I mean, it's, as I said, the response has been really large, and an enormous number of people are talking about the science and what it contains, which I think not enough people were talking about before, uh -huh. but also about how what, what ways it is appropriate to talk about these threats. And one of the sort of secondary themes of my piece was, why aren't we talking about these threats? It's good to me now that we are. Fortunately, doom is in the future, and I'm being told we need to talk more about today. So David, Foster, <laughs> or David Wallace Wells of New York Magazine, thank you very much. Thank you.